I need to replace the either wheel bearings in the undercarriage of my mini skid steer. And one thing I like about this machine is how easy it is to work on the undercarriage. It's very easy to get the track off because of the spring tension. So you can just loosen the screw, which compresses that spring. And that front eyelid just slides right back. With the machine just floating off the ground, it's very easy to derail that front idler. And then it can be popped off the back idler and the sprocket. So there's a look at the uh, rear idler. Uh, ain't got no balls in it. <laughs> You can see the front idler isn't in the best shape either. The outer seals have failed, letting all kinds of water and debris into the bearing areas. So this one isn't probably that far behind of where that rear idler is now. And here's a closer look at that bearing. There's just left the outer dust seals. And then the, the balls and the cages are completely gone. And we just have the inner races stuck to the shaft. And the outer races are there inside the wheel. And the snap rings are pretty messed up. So those will be a pain to remove. So I'm going to start with the inner races on the shafts. Because of the tools I have in my shop, the easiest way for me to remove these is to cut and split them. If I had pressed them off a little first and they weren't directly over the journal, I can cut them a little bit deeper and they would crack and split by themselves. But I stopped a little earlier because I had that shoulder there as well that I didn't want to cut into. So there's a closer look at that shaft. It's not in the best shape. It has a pretty good gouge here, but I think the actual outer seals do meet the shaft close to the journal. So that little gouge shouldn't really be an issue with the integrity of the seals. And I can start working on the more annoying part, actually getting the wheel itself cleaned up and these old bearings out of here. The snap rings are pretty well stuck into their grooves and the eyes where the pliers can actually grab are all bent up. So the first thing I'm going to do here is try and flatten out those eyes so I can actually grab them with the pliers. And this is a lot of just going back and forth, trying to loosen these things up. They're so gummed up in there. So I'll squeeze them with the pliers and I'll come back and try and pry them with the screwdriver. I'll give them a little taps to help maybe spin them a little bit in the groove and kind of work back and forth until they're eventually freed up. This is easily the most annoying and difficult part. And while I'm working on this, I figure I'll mention I was doing this on a Friday afternoon and I needed the machine running Monday morning because I had a whole week of running my sawmill scheduled already. So regardless, this thing had to go back together and be functional to some capacity <laughs> before Monday. And fortunately, I picked the harder one to do first because the one on the reverse side came out uh, quite a bit easier, which was a nice surprise. So now I can start trying to press the existing bearings out of there with the, uh, the little tiny press I have here that my friend lent me. I'm just using a cutoff of a piece of pipe that is a little bit smaller than the diameter of that bore as a press tool. The press was able to kind of shake up and loosen the first bearing, but the second bearing wouldn't budge at all. So I took it outside and uh, resorted to more of an impact press. <laughs> and this actually worked uh, quite a bit better than the press did. And it's pretty quick and kind of fun. I ran out of travel there with that piece of pipe I had, so I cut another piece that was a little bit longer. So I can press the rest of it out. And there's the inside bore. Just needs a pretty good cleanup and it should be good to go for the new bearings. So I will clean out those snap ring grooves and wipe down the interior. And that will be ready for new bearings and I can clean up the shaft as well. I'm using a bristle pad to just clean off the corrosion and rust and stuff. 
so that the new bearings will slide past there onto the journals. Now I can finally start pressing the new bearings on and getting these idlers reassembled. I'm starting the bearing at the press just to make sure it goes on straight and square. And then I'll go over to the vise and press them on the rest of the way. The vise just has more capacity and is easier to use than that little press. And these bearings don't take a whole lot of pressure to actually seat. There's a little resistance as the bearing goes down the shaft and then a little more once the bearing actually goes onto the journal. Again, I'm using a scrap piece of pipe, which is just a little bit bigger than the shaft's diameter to push on that inner race and slide that bearing onto the shaft. Now I can start getting those into the actual wheel. So I'll put a snap ring on one side. That is what I will press the bearings to. The press doesn't have enough capacity to start this, so I'm doing that with a few taps of a hammer. And the better way to put this back together would probably be to press these in from both sides using a tool that presses on both the inner and outer race. I don't have a tool or a lathe to make one, so I am, uh, I'm doing it this way. This transfers that force through the bearing, but uh, it seems like this is well within their axial rating and doesn't cause them any damage. The fit isn't super tight, so it doesn't take much force to actually seat these. And now I can install that other snap ring to keep those bearings locked in place. Last thing on here is going to be the rubber seals. These keep all of the water and dirt and debris away from the bearings. These are what failed previously and caused the bearings to, uh, to really, really fail. <laughs> Okay, that idler is done, so I can slide it back into the undercarriage, and then I can move on to the front idler. The front idler is the one that wasn't completely destroyed by the machine, so it's a little more work to actually get it taken apart. So I will uh, press out the shaft and bearings from the wheel. And then I got uh, excited and got ahead of myself and started pressing the bearings off the shaft without cleaning the shaft up. So then the bearings got hung up on the corrosion. So I just went ahead and cut them off. And there's the balls and cages that were missing on the rear idler. And then this is just the same kind of process as the other one. I have my shaft with my inner races to cut off and then I can start cleaning everything up and pressing on the new bearings. It's exactly the same process and actually all these components are exactly the same. This is kind of a nice plus of this machine. The Bearing seals and snap rings are the exact same components on the front and rear idlers. And there is the assembled front idler. Just needs a snap ring and the seals. And then this thing can go back onto the machine as well. I can put the track back on. Same exact process as removing it. Get the track onto the rear idler and sprocket. And just have the machine just barely off the ground. And then you can just slide the whole thing over the front idler without really any resistance. And that repair is uh, done, and this machine is ready to roll again for snatching slabs off my sawmill. 